We want daily solutions. We want daily solutions. We want daily solutions. We want daily solutions. We All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Graham, and that's it. My name is Graham. There's, there's no one else in the studio here with me today. Um, Ashcon's going to be back very shortly, and uh, yeah, we have the old Grashcom duo. But for now, I'm just going to launch right into answering today's question, which is, you mention not to use cement board when using tiles on the wall. What is the reason for that? And uh, there, well, there's, there's a couple good reasons, you know, uh, besides just we said so. The, and they are related to soundproofing and then salt. I, I guess like so much else in the float world. And the, the salt aspect I guess we'll talk about first because that's more core to what cement backer board is. And basically, just uh, in case you're not familiar with it, it's uh, a different kind of material that you're putting behind... Uh, typical tile wall, and it's kind of porous, uh, but still very dense, uh, kind of inflexible type material. And typically you'd put this directly on the studs rather than uh, putting on drywall or something on top of them. And the, the kind of classic application is that the tile going on top is itself kind of permeable, especially the grout. And so, for instance, in a shower area, you expect a certain amount of the water to kind of seep into the grout and perhaps get into whatever's behind it. And so if that's regular drywall, then you risk it getting wet and molding out and, and stuff like that. So you want this, this kind of material back there that's more solid, that's not going to mold, but that's also semi-permeable. So when the water gets in there, uh, it's allowed to evaporate over time, which is kind of the idea. So with our application, we're using porcelain tile with epoxy grout, so we're not really expecting water to get back there. So the main protection from the walls is actually just that impermeable surface of the tile and the uh, epoxy grout. And uh, the other thing is if water did get back in there and if you were using kind of a permeable uh, solution with the cement backer board, salt would also theoretically be able to get back there. And that's terrible because while water is able to evaporate, salt water will get into something. And when it dries, the salt crystals will expand and that thing will just start to get destroyed, which is where so much of the salt damage that we uh, see in our space comes from. So that's kind of just on the salt proofing side, why, why you don't really see that cement backer board. And the main reason that you see the alternative, which is some kind of either uh, uh, adapted drywall setup, you know, usually MMR, mold and mildew resistant, maybe multi-layered for soundproofing, or specifically soundproof drywall, something like Quiet Rock, uh, also maybe uh, MR, you know, mold and mildew resistant. And... The idea with that is, you're, you're, in addition to trying to make these wet rooms, which is usually where cement board is going, you're now trying to soundproof those and, and turn them into, you know, the equivalent of a sound studio almost. So cement backer board is not going to provide you the same kind of soundproofing as a really heavy drywall setup, or especially something like Quiet Rock. And uh, so since you want that soundproofing is also one of the reasons that we go with a totally impermeable surface on the outside. Other than salt water, you just want to make sure that now that you've put up this heavy soundproof drywall, you're protecting it. So kind of for, for both of those reasons, and they, they mix together a lot, but that's typically why you're not seeing cement backer board in a float center uh, type application. And instead, what you will see if you are using tile is this heavy layer of soundproof drywall, again, whatever, whether it's custom made or just multi-layers of, of drywall with something like green glue in between. Um, and then you'll see the, the porcelain tile on top of that. All right, that wasn't so bad. I think that, uh, you know, the Graham-only show can, can hold its own. Maybe, maybe we'll just kick Ashcon off for the foreseeable future, you know? Just kind of wing it on my own. Uh, if you do not want to see that, let me know by going to floattanksolutions.com slash podcast, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, everyone.